Finances are super important. How many people have questions about finances? I'm gonna put mine all the way to the ceiling. Well, then we're right on time because I'm gonna bring up Ashley Fox, who is the founder of Impify. She's a financial education specialist, and we've got some cards about her in your chair. So give her a Beyonce welcome. Ashley, come on to the stage. We are loving your dress, girlfriend. You can take any mic. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. So one, I want you to say great. How's everybody doing? Great. Say it louder. Great. Okay. All right. So before I begin, I'm actually humble and honored to be on this stage. I'd like to thank everybody for their contribution for being here. So give yourselves a round of applause for being here. I would like to thank Soledad and her entire team for giving me the opportunity. What they do not know is that I truly value and am inspired by this organization because I solely one day want to create something just as dynamic. So thank you so much. I truly appreciate everyone for giving me this opportunity. So how many of you actually want to be wealthy? Say I. I. Are you sure? Yes. All right. So that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we begin, do you mind if I share with you my story? Yes. All right, so my name is Ashley Fox. I am from Philadelphia. And when I was your age, maybe even younger, I wanted to make a lot of money, wear nice clothes, and work in like a, an amazing career. But I had to look good and make a lot of money. So how many of you actually want to make a lot of money and look good doing it? OK. So that was my goal. And I graduated high school. And I attended Howard University. Yeah. <laughs> so at Howard, I knew I loved math. How many of you love math? How many of you do not like math, Virginia? So I used to tutor people like you guys when I was in school. I loved math and I loved business, so I figured I wanted to major in finance. And I knew that being at Howard, I was competing with the Harvards and the Yales of the world, so I had to be the best of the best because I wanted to work in the financial capital of the world, New York City on Wall Street. And so that's exactly what I did. When I was in college, I had four internships. Three of them were at Wall Street Investment Banks. And I landed my dream job at JP Morgan when I graduated college. <laughs> and I worked in asset management. So what I did, I worked with individuals who made $25 million or more. So by a show of hands, how many of you can actually pick up the phone and speak to someone who's a millionaire and they'll actually pick up the phone? Raise your hand. How many of you know, know, know any millionaires? OK. No, it's OK. <laughs> so don't worry, because I didn't either. My job was to be able to help them stay rich. So the companies that we spend our money with, the clothes that we wear, the basketball teams, if you live in New York and you have at least $25 million, there's a 9 out of 10 chance I could type in your name and I can see everything that you have at our bank. And I saw where they shopped, where they traveled, where they lived, how much they didn't pay in taxes. I saw everything. So just imagine that you were me. And this entire room was a company. You came into this building every day, and everyone around you was a millionaire, but you weren't. How would that make you feel? Anybody? Raise your hand. Oh, by the way, by the way, I'm, I'm a teacher, like, by, in, in my heart. Um, and we're going we're to take notes, and I'm just going to call on you, so you just got to talk back to me. OK? All right, so how would you guys feel? Everyone in here was a millionaire but you. How would you feel? How would you feel? Small. Small? What about you? OK, regret, unsuccessful. Anybody else? Upset, Upset. OK? Go ahead. Left out. Left out. Any other feelings? Motivated. There you go, baby. So I actually felt the way all of you felt. I was actually the only African-American female on my floor. And I felt like I wasn't good enough. I felt like I didn't fit in. But I'm the type of person, if I'm in the room and there's something you are talking about that I do not know, I will make sure I know. And so I, what I did was I did everything wealthy people did because I realized I deserve to be wealthy. So it got to a point where I felt like, don't I deserve to be the client? And I realized that chasing money, always wanting to make money, never made me happy. Because you're always going to find somebody that has more of it. So really, what are you chasing? And so guess what I did? Just take a guess. Take a guess. I was always around millionaires and billionaires. I realized I deserve to be the client. If I stayed in my job for 20 to 30 years, I would never be in the position that our clients were in. What do you think I did? I quit. So I am that crazy millennial that quit her job to go follow her dreams. And so that's exactly what I did. I had a certain amount of money saved for a certain period of time, but I knew that when I went back home to Philly, the places I traveled, the clothes that I wore, the money that I had, the things I invested in, 
No one knew what, nobody knew how to do that. I was the first person in my immediate family to go to college and nobody really knew. And I realized that it wasn't because I was better than anybody. It's just that I was given different opportunities and I chose to major in money. How many of you have ever taken a class that you feel like you probably won't use when you're an adult? That's how I felt. But for something we use every single day of our life, you are not taught the basics to money. You learn after you make the mistake. So I realized that I wanted to give what Wall Street gave his clients to the world Wall Street would never talk to. How? I had no idea. But I knew who I wanted to be. So I ended up quitting my job. I had this big quitting my job brunch where like 50 people from all over came. I was never going to wear stockings. I was just going to do what I wanted. I had no job, no boss. I was living my life. Now, how many of you have a business or have the desire to run a business? Now, somebody tell me, how, many, how often you get paid when you run a business? Just take a guess. Take a guess. You said not often, anybody else? Just take a guess. Honestly, if you run your business, how often will you get paid? So every day? Every month? Take a guess. What do you think? What do you think? Whenever you want. So here's the thing. I thought you got paid every two weeks, like Wall Street paid me. And then when money stopped coming, I didn't have any. So I was still traveling the world, still shopping. Um, I was doing everything because I just assumed money was coming and I was addicted to the life that I had on Wall Street. And then my bank account was empty. And then I got evicted from my Harlem apartment. And all I had was a car, a maxed out credit card, a negative bank account, and a wonderful mother and father back in Philadelphia had a great couch that I slept on for two years. That was actually one of the worst and best times of my life. Worst because how could you go from quitting your job, having this big old celebration, telling social media, go follow your dreams, and you're teaching a subject of something you don't even have. But it was one of the best times of my life because it also taught me the value of money. I was that girl, I'm the type of person, if, I go, if I'm in New York and I see a cool restaurant, I take notes to my phone and I'll just go. Whether it's expensive or cheap, I go because I had money. And it wasn't until I lost it, until I truly started to appreciate it. And sometimes when you hit rock bottom, the only direction you can go is forward. But I had this vision that I was going to change the world and I was going to teach everyone about money. And so I randomly became a financial advisor because I had different certifications. But again, I was targeting the people that didn't have a lot of money. And so I used to work out of the Marriott Lounge in downtown Philadelphia because it was in the center of the city and it was free Wi-Fi. And that's where I met with all of my clients. Crying every day, I wasn't eating, I wasn't sleeping, but I knew that from the mistakes I had made, the education I was given, the experience that I had, I was going to teach people about money, but change the way they thought about it. Because if your mind's not right, your money won't be right. So I needed to change the way we view money because one of the things I learned is that wealthy people think different. They operate different, they read different, they teach their kids different. And I feel like you shouldn't have to be wealthy to, to realize you deserve to be wealthy. You shouldn't have to come from money to realize that you can be on the cover of a Forbes magazine and be a trust fund baby too. So I realized I wanted to give that to the world. Fast forward eight, nine months, I opened an office, built a six-figure business, moved out of my parents' home, um, got a nice car, but then I was unhappy again because I realized you cannot change people. You can only help them and grow them and inspire them to want to change. And I realized, to be honest, I got tired of dealing with adults. Because the older you get, the more no's you get and the less belief you have in yourself. But I said to myself, how can I be able to provide financial education to prevent an adult from making financial mistakes? And I realized if you teach a child. And so I created this word called Empify, which is the word empower and modify merge together where we create financial education programs and we implement them into different school systems. So I teach middle school, high school, college students, and adults. The ultimate goal for Empify is to be an online platform and a brick and mortar location so that no matter how much money you do or do not have, you are given the tools and resources you need to build wealth. Because if you don't come from money, your parents can only teach you so much. And it's not that they, want, they, they don't want better for you, but you can only teach what you know. If you're not around money every single day, you're not around millionaires and billionaires, how do you know what to do to become one? So for me, I said, I'm going to do this crazy thing. I'm going to change it. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to figure it out. I knew why, and I figured out the what and the how later. Fast forward five, I actually just celebrated my five-year anniversary, July 12th, a couple of days ago. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm a completely different person. Um, I've had over, we have, a, I have over 200 clients all throughout the country. I've, I've helped my clients invest over $1.5 million. And these are people who have bad credit. 
people on the verge of foreclosure, people who are on welfare, people that the bank will not talk to because of who you are and where you come from. Also, we've been in over 50 schools throughout Philadelphia. No, I would say the tri-state area. We actually just implemented our first program in a school in the Bronx here in New York. So technically, we're in two cities. And the goal is to get our program and our content in school so that is a priority. There's no reason why you have to take a basket weaving class and you do not have to take a money management class. And for me, I feel like we deserve it. So that's me in a nutshell. I'm the crazy millennial who quit her job, who actually believes that we can change the way we operate and feel about money. Because if I can change the way you think, it can have a direct correlation to how you operate and manage your money. So we're good. We know who Ashley Fox is now. All right, so let's get started. Now, take out your notebooks. Tell me, right, think about this. Let's talk about why we, the majority of America is not wealthy. What are they going through? Why are they frustrated? I want you to write down the feelings, and, and even if it's you, how do you feel about money? Why are we not wealthy? Why is it that we're passing down generational debt and not generational wealth? What's going on within us as a people? How do we feel right now about money? And you can just write a couple of things. Whatever comes to your mind, the feelings to describe why you have 2% of the population controlling 98% of this country. Anybody want to share? Go ahead, what do you have? I think it's because lack of knowledge. Okay. Like, okay. 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 So, exposure, knowledge. So we feel like if we got the knowledge, any exposure, We'd be okay? We missing anything? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Okay. So here's one thing that I knew you were going to say. Um, when it comes to building wealth and money, whose responsibility is it to be wealthy? So say it's my responsibility. Say my responsibility. So here's what you cannot do. You cannot point the finger. You always look in the mirror. Because yes, we have a crazy government. Yes, our schools are failing. Yes, we may not come from money. But that doesn't mean that you cannot change the trajectory of your family. So now that we are all here, it is our job to get the exposure, to go get the knowledge, to get the tools and resources we need to build wealth. So who in here? Has, has feelings on that paper that they know when they are 30, 40, 50 years old, they will not feel this way about money. Anybody? That they know they will be wealthy, they will be living the life they deserve, the life that they want. Anybody in here know by at least 40 years old you're going to live the life you want financially? Anybody? Okay, I'll get you because you're in the front. I need you to come up here though. You ready? Come on, okay, I need somebody to come up here who knows they're going to be wealthy and knows what they want to do with this money. It's okay. All right, come on. All right, so here we go. What's your name? My name is Miriam John Sandy. Miriam. We been in the bathroom. Yes. We did. Okay. <laughs> all right, so Miriam, right? Yes. So Miriam, she has all the money. Is it Baruch? Yes, Baruch okay. College. All right, so she has all the money. Come close. Come close. Oh. She has all the money. So we are going to refer to Miriam as Big Bank Miriam. Okay. <laughs> She has the money. Tell them, you, I have, tell them that you have the money. I have the money. So when we address Miriam, we call her by her true name, Big Bank Miriam. So when you graduate, you're 40, 50 years old, what, what are you going to be doing? What is your career? What are you, what are you going to be doing? Um, I see myself um, definitely doing something in the entertainment and okay. media industries. Um, right now, I feel like I'm focused more on marketing. Okay. But I also know that I don't want to work for someone else for okay. the rest of my life. So, so. she'll be in entertainment. How much money do you want to make? Give me a number. Whatever it is your heart desires. Don't think about where you are. Just tell um, me what you want. Every year you're bringing in what? No less. 90000 90000 Okay. Yeah. She wants 900000 900000 She's 40, 50 years old. $900,000. She's worth it, right? Big, she's the big bank. She can do it. Okay. All right. So, boom. Now you have that 900000 right? You have it. It's yours. Right. What are you getting with that money? What are you spending on? Tell me what you want. Tell me what you want. Let's um, go. I definitely want to give back. Okay, you want to give back? Let's yeah. go. What else? Um, what are you going to use that money for for you? What do you want? What do you want? A house. Okay, she's getting a house. I want a house for my family. Okay, what else? Um, what are you getting? 
You like clothes, shoes, yeah, nails, I love hair? Clothes, yes. What, 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 gotta get the new weave. Okay, there you go. She get, she getting her hair done. What, what kind of shoes do you want? Um, I love designer shoes. Just give me, a, give me one of your designers. Margiela, Balenciaga. Margiela. Okay, Balenciaga. Okay, what else are you getting? What are you doing with your money? Um, I definitely want to travel. Travel. So she's traveling. So you're gonna be getting on some flights, right? Yes. Okay. Anything else? Um. Invest, so yeah. That was Somebody, you're cheating. You're cheating. This is Big Bank Miriam's time. No, she, thank you. <laughs> All right. Cheating because you see it on the, on the, on, on the screen. <laughs> yes. All right, right, so. So now, she's getting nice clothes. She's getting nice shoes. I want you guys to write down in the past 30 days what you spent money on. Now, when you do it, right? When you do it, I want you to write the name of the company that made money. So let's, for instance, if you took an Uber to get here, Uber's making money. If you bought some clothes from Forever 21, you would put the shirt, but you, Forever 21 got your money. If you ate some food at the bodega, put the bodega on there. If you bought some sneakers from Foot Locker, put Foot Locker on there. What did you spend your money on? Now, so, the first thing I love that you said, which is new for me, that you wanted to give back. I like that. Yeah, I like that. I give back. But here's the problem. She knew what she wanted to spend money on before she knew what she wanted to use that money for so that she can make money on top of her money. Mm. Now, all right, let's give Big Bang Mary a round of applause. Woo! So now, for those of you who do not know, your spending account is called your checking account. Write that down. That is your everyday account. When you are spending money, you're using a checking account. But the problem is the first thing that we thought to do in these past 30 days was spend. How many of you have sneakers on your list? Anybody? Shoes? Anybody? What, what, what store? Adidas. Adidas. Anybody bought food? <laughs> what, what, was the, what was the name, name of food company? McDonald's. Chipotle McDonald's. Okay. Wendy's, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Chipotle, McDonald's, Adidas, Uber. Everyone, they, I feel you. She said Amazon. That's an, I, <laughs> we made everybody rich but ourselves. I need you to understand that the reason that there are Fortune 500 companies is because we are the consumer. We are the consumer. And the reason why we feel like we don't have a lot of money it's because we value them more than we do ourselves. So, Big Bank Miriam and everyone in the room, the first thing you do when you get money is you pay yourself. You matter. We can make everybody rich later. Everybody can be, everyone's rich. But why do we still feel those feelings that we wrote on that paper? We matter. We work 40 plus hours, whether we're in school, we're putting in work, whether we're at our jobs, we're making everyone rich but ourselves. We matter. So, that spin actually is the last thing you do. When you pay yourself, you save and you invest. Now, saving, what's the account we use to save? Savings, savings account. So, the moment you start making money, you need a checking in a savings account. The problem is most people open the checking account first. Some people have the savings account. No one invests. How many of you feel like if you could grade yourself on a scale of one to 10, you are not a 10 when it comes to saving? Be honest, it's okay. I, remember, I lost all my money, so I, I, I have no room to judge anyone in the room. So, here's what I want you guys to do. You can do it now or you can do it later. I want you to write this down. Empify.com, E-M-P-I-F-Y.com backslash savings. I wrote an ebook, free. How many of you like free things? Say I. I. Free ebook. I will show you how to save, what accounts to use, even if you do not have a lot of money. I need you to pay yourself. The moment you get money for the holidays or your birthday or allowance or your job, we have to stop giving it away. We are addicted to paying bills. And the more money you make, the more bills you're gonna have. So really, what are we chasing and being so frustrated with if we know bills are going nowhere? You matter first. Take care of you, but I show you how to figure out what to save and where to put it. Free ebook, empify.com backslash savings. All you need to do is just submit your name, you'll get the ebook. And you have my contact, so if I'm, after this, if you need me, I'm all yours. So now, we save. We save for things later on down the line, correct? So what is something that we, how many of you are in high school? What is something in high school you should be saving for? 
College. College. E even before college. What can you save for while in high school? A car. A car. What else? Do you guys have prom? Yeah. So even if you're not an adult, there are still things that are coming in the future that you have to set money aside for. And the older you get, the less money your parents give you. So let's adapt those habits right now, because if you cannot save a dime out of a dollar, you will never save a million out of 10. You have to master it while, you're, while you have a little bit of money. So when you get that job, so literally, I used to work at Foot Locker. Guess what I bought when I worked at Foot Locker? Sneak, I had every pair of Jordans. But when I got to college, I wish I had a car. I didn't have a car, but I had all the money, but I had all the shoes that I didn't even wear after that. Um, but if I would have saved properly, I could have gotten that car. If I would have invested my money, I probably, if I would have invested in high school, Lord knows, I would have never gotten kicked out of anybody's apartment. <laughs> so I want you to understand that just because you don't have a lot of money doesn't mean that there are things that are not important. You don't save for tomorrow, tomorrow. You save for it today. You have to have a forward thinking mindset. All right, so now let's get to the, 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 real, the real gist of what people are not talking about, investing. An investment is pretty much where you put time, energy, and money into something so that it grows into something much more bigger. Now, sometimes people say, well, I don't know what to invest in. How many of you want to invest, but you just don't know where to start? It's okay. Here's where you start. That list of the things you spent money on, those companies, you can own a piece of the majority of the companies you use every day. How many of you have Snapchat or Instagram or Facebook? We got, do we know who owns Instagram and Facebook? Mark Zuckerberg. If you don't know him, he's a billionaire. You know why? Because I like to post pictures. I like filters. I like to post my Insta. He's rich because I like showing my life to the world. He is. Evan Spiegel is the owner of Snapchat. He's rich because he created these things that just disappear and Facebook stole all his ideas and now both of them are competing while we are consuming. They are billionaires. Those are two companies that you can own a piece of. You don't have to go create your own social media if you don't want to, but you can own a piece of something you're always using. How many of you have iPhones? How many of you are loyal to the iPhone? You will argue with the Samsung user. <laughs> Apple has more cash than the US government. There's a reason that people still stand in line for the same phone that has, we, I was just talking to someone, she has an, I think an 8 plus and I have an X. Her camera's better than mine. I only got the, the X for the camera and I don't even like the camera. But you, that doesn't mean I'm going to, now Samsung's camera's really cool. But I'm not about to get a Samsung camera. I'm not going to get the phone. I'm loyal to the brand. There's ways you can own a piece of that company. If we're always going to use the iPhone, Use the social media. Think about the soap that you use, the cars that your parents drive, the Chipotle that you always eat, the Amazon that 49% of every online transaction happens on Amazon. 49 per $300 billion is, is, that's insane. And Amazon hasn't even scratched the surface. They just bought Whole Foods. Who knows what they're gonna do with Whole Foods? So the point that I'm making is these companies are growing every day and we aren't getting a piece of the pie. How many of you ever played basketball before? How many of you ever watched basketball? So, basketball players. Who wins the game? The person watching the game or the person in the game? Right, you cannot win if you don't play the game. We're so busy watching everybody else be successful, we have to get in the game. We are the number one draft pick. So we deserve to play the game. My job is just to show you how to do it. So here's what I need you to do. I need you to now write 10 companies you would invest in. Now here's how you think about it. Who do you think will be around in the next 10 to 15 years? Five years, 10 years. Who do you think, who do you think is going to change the dynamics? Who do you? <laughs> who, do you who do you always give your money to? Who is your community always giving their money to? I'll give an example. I don't really watch TV. Um, but I have a TV in my living room. It's not plugged in, but it's there. <laughs> and everyone watches TV. So I was just telling my mom, when I was your age, there was something called TGIF. And on Friday, if you weren't at your TV at 8 o'clock, you missed the show, you had to wait three, four months for the rerun. There was no pause. I got to go to the bathroom, rewind. I want to watch the whole season. None of that. Right now, we watch things instantly. We stream things. 
So what I thought realized is cable companies are going to go out of business because you have things like a Netflix and a Hulu that are way cheaper than a th two, three hundred dollar cable bill. I'm going to invest in Netflix. Netflix is a hundred billion dollar business. You know why? Because we like to Netflix and chill. <laughs> Amazon. I remember I wanted to buy Amazon less than a year ago, maybe a year ago. If I would invest in Amazon less than a year ago, I would have more than doubled my money. And they're not stopping. So write down companies you want to own. It's so easy for us to write. I, I, this is interesting. You can't see it because I'm up here. But when I told you to write down where you spend, everybody's like, okay. Now I'm forcing you to think. What do you want to own? The reason that it's not so easy is because not everybody does it. We, we know we want to buy, but we have to start to figure out how can we grow our net worth. We deserve to be wealthy, right? So write down companies you want to own. Think of the large companies that are not going anywhere. Like, I'm not about to stop using Apple, so I, I'm, I'm going, I bought Apple. I love Amazon. I literally just bought a shower cap on Amazon because I just didn't want to go to the store. I just checked to see if it was on Amazon first. If they have it, swipe literally takes two seconds. The thought of not paying shipping is amazing to me. But they figured out the psychology, which is why millions and millions of people love Amazon. And they're going nowhere. So think of these organizations, these companies you want to own. It's great to spin, but I'd rather say, hey, I have the iPhone X and I own stock in Apple. I spend my time posting on Instagram, but just as much as Evan Spiegel and Mark Zuckerberg want to compete, I'll just sit back and watch because somebody's going to come out on top. That's how I see it. So just think of those companies. Who are you wearing? What do you drink all the time? My athletes, you drink Gatorade? Gatorade, I believe, is owned by Pepsi. Wherever you go to a restaurant, where do you shop at all the time? What are the clothes you are loyal to, the makeup you use? There are people making billions off of us because we love to post, we love to talk about it, we love to look gorgeous, but people are investing in building wealth. So anybody want to share what they have? Make it good, make it good. What do you have? The whole 10 thing? No, no, just give me a couple. Okay, so now that's a good one. ESPN, does anybody know who, who owns ESPN? Disney. Disney. And they own ABC as well. Interesting, for Christmas I bought my entire family stock. My mom, my sister, my brother, my niece, and my dad. And I just got my 80-year-old grandma stock too, because she told me she was living for another 20 years, so she told me that I should buy her some stock. So I said, okay, grandma. So I got my mom, who's sitting right there, um, ESPN, you know why? Because she wakes up to ESPN and she falls asleep to ESPN. We watch Scandal and How to Get Away with Murder together. I bought my sister Carter's because I have a beautiful one-year-old niece. All she does is buy her Carter's clothes. Bought my dad Dunkin' Donuts because that's, that that's all he eats. Bought my brother Facebook that's all he, he, or, and Twitter. He always tweets all the time. So the way you're thinking is right. Start to think about, again, the TV shows you watch. All of those networks are owned by companies. Then there's a 9 out of 10 chance that you can own a piece of those companies. And what you can own, what it's called, is called a stock. So look at a stock like a slice of pizza, right? Let's say everybody in here is hungry. I come in with a slice of pizza, a box of pizza, Ashley's great pizza, and you say, I want to buy your pizza. I said, okay, my pizza's really good. I'm going to give it to you exclusively. You can pay $10 a slice. You say, you know what? I'm really, really hungry. I want to buy four slices. Great. Now, you own some of Ashley's pizza. I have the name of the company, but you have a piece of the pizza. And it's just literally pieces of a company that you can own, that they allow the world to own pieces of their company. Now, you can buy one piece of my pizza, you can buy 100. So you can buy one share of Facebook, or you can buy 1,000. You can buy one share of Nike, or you can buy 500. You can buy two, you can buy three. Right now, Nike, uh, the, the cost to buy Nike stock is $77. How many of you have paid over $100 for Nike sneakers? How many of you ever bought a pair of Jordans before? It costs more to, to get the Jordans, one, than it does to make the Jordans, let alone to own the entire company. Facebook right now is about $200. For all of you that knew all the foods you wanted to eat, if you add up how much you spend on food, I can guarantee you it's more than $200. Guarantee. Same thing with Amazon. I invested in Amazon because I'm not stopping. Stop, I'm not going to stop. But Amazon is making me money, right? Amazon is releasing how much money they made this past quarter at the end of the month. If they show that they made a profit, their stock is going to skyrocket. 
The last time they did it, their stock shot up 7% in a day. Meaning if you invested, let's say a million dollars on Amazon, you made 70,000 in a matter of seconds. Just because now, now, now you, may not ha- you may not have a million dollars, but you can own pieces of companies. So Amazon right now is one of the most, if not the most stock, which is literally at 1,800 right now. But a lot of the stocks that you, that you talk about, the companies you wanna own, are under $200, $300. I bought Netflix at $100. I bought like two shares and I'm pissed I should've bought 2,000 shares. But I didn't have that much money. Netflix right now is almost $400. And I don't even have a Netflix account, but everybody else does. So in this case, it's nothing wrong with spending the money, but you also have to recognize you have to build wealth. Because every time you're spending, you're subtracting. You're not adding. We have to increase our net worth. Does that make sense? Now, the account that you use to invest, so we have checking to spend, savings to save, brokerage account is the account to use to invest. And if you are under the age of 18, your mother and father can open you an account, you can put your money into the account, and there's an account called Stockpile that I, I love. It's stock, S-T-O-C-K-P-I-L-E. The cool thing about Stockpile is one, how many of you think finance is just complicating, big words, big numbers, don't lie. It's kind of like reading the back of a medicine bottle. Nobody knows what that stuff means but doctors. Same thing, Stockpile makes it easy. There's pictures, there's colors, it's exciting. The other great, how many of you think you need a lot of money to invest? Stockpile, guess how much money you need to open the account? None. If you want to buy stock and all you have is $5, you can own $5 worth of Amazon. And that's the other reason. You can buy pieces of a company. So let's just say you want to own Facebook and right now it's $200 and you don't have $200. All you have is $25. You can take the $25 and own $25 worth the worth. $25 worth of the company. That makes sense? A piece, you can own a piece of a piece. So it's kind of like my slice of pizza. If I, I came and I said my slice of pizza is $200, I only have 100 right now. I'll give you half of my slice. But you still have the pizza and it's yours. Does that make sense? So if you don't know anything else or learn anything else from me today, I want you to understand that before you go spin, you need to pay you. You matter. And then go get the nice stuff. I have this thing. I like nice stuff. I'm, I'm, you're talking to somebody who wants a private jet. So I, I like nice things, but here's what I do. I used to have this motto, if you can't buy it twice, you cannot afford it. So when I went to go buy my nice little purses and things, if I couldn't buy it twice, I couldn't afford it. Now what I do is, is I can't buy it unless I invest the exact same amount. So when I, bought it, I, bought it, I recently bought a bag in February. I bought Amazon stock, and then I bought the bag. There's nothing wrong with spending on things you want, but take care of the things that are actually a priority. Because I'm, I'm, I'm actually thinking about buying a new bag, and I just bought the bag in February. But I told myself, you can't buy the bag unless you invest. So that may be, I want to go to Chipotle, I want to go to Chipotle. Set aside that same amount and invest for yourself. Buy stock in Chipotle if you want to. But on a high level, you don't have to be so technical about investing. Just buy what you use, companies you know. I'm not the big old stock guru. Don't ask me what's the next big, I don't know. I buy what I know. The only thing is two stocks I own that I do not use. One is Tesla, the electric car, because I'm obsessed with Tesla and I love Elon Musk and I think he's going to change the world. That's all. And the second one is marijuana. I don't smoke, but one day everyone else will and it'll be legal everywhere. So for me, I invested in that. That's, those are the only two. Oh yeah, Netflix. But everybody else uses Netflix, so it makes sense. Um, so that is the, that's how you start to think about what to invest in. Does everybody it make sense? Do you guys feel like it's obtainable for you? I, I have a one-year-old niece that is worth more than me because I have student loan debt and she has nothing. And my goal is to make sure she has a million dollars by 18. And let's say worst case scenario, I, I hit 50% of my goal, she'll have a half a million dollars at 18. Let's just say I get 25% of the goal. She'll have a quarter million dollars. You know what I would have did with a quarter million dollars at 18 years old? <laughs> I would've went to school for free. So you have to not look at it like it's not a lot of money. Piece by piece, step by step, you have to build wealth. Because you matter. It's not gonna come, you're not gonna have millions of dollars today, but I'm gonna keep buying these little Netflix stock until I get to a point by 40 where I can live off of the investments that I've created for myself, all right? All right, so now, I need you guys to stand up. Come on, come on. Now, put your hand on your head. 
I need you to, one, realize. You, I can teach you everything about money, but it's one thing to get the information and to lack the inspiration. My job is to pour belief in your heart. But the problem is, as women, we spend more money putting, we spend more money on our heads than we do putting things in our heads. Wealth comes from what is in here. If your mind is not right, nothing will be right. You need to identify who you want to be, and life will create the things that you need. Because I can teach you everything, but if you don't believe that you deserve to be wealthy, nothing will happen. So I love that you can get your hair done, but I need you to focus on putting into your mind what you're listening to, what you're reading, what you, the classes you're taking. You need to build you, because you matter. Now put your hand on your heart, and I want you to close your eyes. I want you to think about who you want to be what you will look like, what you will represent. Not the goals and things you'll obtain because you need to get your mind right, then you get your grind right, and then your life will be right. I need you to understand who you are going to be. Who are you, who are you going to be? What are you going to do? How are you going to feel? Because what you can see and understand and believe is who you will become. Now, open your eyes. Put your hand on your chest. Stick your chest out. And say with your chest, and I mean say it with your chest, <laughs> I am a wealth builder. I am a wealth builder. Take your chest out some more, some more, some more. I am a wealth builder. I am a wealth builder. I need you guys to remember that. I love you and I believe in you. And you can do anything. And you all are wealth builders. Thank you. All right. All right, so now, what do we, are we going to do questions? You guys have questions? Any questions? Comments, concerns, things you need to me to repeat? Stockpile. So to, to get the savings account, Amplify.com, I mean, sorry, savings booklet, booklet. Amplify.com backslash savings. The account is called Stockpile. If you're under 18, you do need a parent, but I, I promise you it takes 60 seconds. You need a social security number from you and your parent and an address. That's all you need. Hi. Yes. Hi, I'm asking a question. Yes. Um, my name is Sydney Logan. I am a sophomore at Babson College. Okay. Um, and so you're talking about wealth, but what about creating generational wealth um, so that it doesn't just stay with you so you teach your children um, to understand the value? And you mentioned that with your niece, but also um, I have a trouble with my parents. Um, I think it's kind of culturally. They're like, you don't need to know about that. You don't need to know that business. But it's in... I'm trying to ask some questions with the desire of creating generational wealth so that I know things that they didn't necessarily know at that age to create progression and to keep the money, I guess in the family or keep that knowledge in that family? So to answer your question, sometimes it's hard. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an honest to God, true story. One of the easiest ways to do it is to get life insurance. That is, a, you, life insurance is literally paying for free money for someone else. That's the first way. But sometimes your parents have these preconditioned thoughts that you cannot change. Mm -hmm. Me, I want a, life, a lot of life insurance. My dad thinks I'm crazy for having a lot of life insurance. For me, I need millions of dollars because one day my house will be a million. If I pass away, my kids need to pay off my house. My kids don't, will never have to pay for school. They will never have to get kicked out of anybody's apartment. So we go through these things to ensure that the people that come after us don't have to. So sometimes it's not about changing who was here before you. It's focusing on who you can help after you. Mm -hmm. So for me, my niece will never, ever have to. Now, and I don't even know if my sister even knows the accounts I have for my niece. I just need her social the day she was born because that is, I, this is what I represent. So sometimes it's focusing on becoming a better you. The reason my family has stocks is because that's what I got for them. A couple weeks ago, my mom told me she had money and she's going to, she bought all these stocks. I didn't tell her to do anything. It's what she wanted to do. So sometimes it's putting that bug in the ear of someone you care about, but being a great you, and everything else will surround itself the right way. And it's okay, because you cannot change your parents. Mm -hmm. And just love them for who they are, and realize they have given you the best that they could. But it's your responsibility to take care of who comes after you. Thank you. Hmm? Hi, thank you so much. Um, my name is Lauren, um, and my question was, you talked a lot about um, investing and doing um, with stocks and such, but there's always risk that comes with mm -hmm. um, like putting your money in the market and then you're not sure like if um, 
it, it would right. like go down in the next like year or so. So like, how do you think about um, what's a good time to invest and like, how do you manage um, like your money while you're doing other things? Because like, I'm sh- like a lot of us are students, so we can't um, focus on like watching our right. money. all. So the- here's one thing you have to understand. I am a wealth builder. Getting rich is having a lot of money right now. Getting wealthy is having a lot of money forever. So I used to buy stocks every day, and I would literally watch the stock market every day, and I drove myself insane. I, my job is if I don't need that money, I can pass it down to my family. Now, there is risk associated with it. So when you start, do not put your entire savings account in the investment in investments. But if, again, that's why I asked you, who do you believe will be around the next five to 10 years? I'll give an example, Snapchat. Not even Snapchat, Facebook. Remember when Facebook had a data breach and they, they somehow millions of people, information got to the Trump administration? Their stock dropped. All I, everyone panicked, so they were selling it. It went to $160. I said, that's actually a time I need to buy because no one is about to delete their Facebook or their Instagram. And if we are mad that everyone is taking our data, then you might as well not use a credit card, not go on Amazon, not go on Google, not do anything because that is all companies are. So in my mind, I'm buying more. And, and I was right because Facebook is now $207 right now. So it's, it's about the timing. But if you sit and you try to time it the right way or get so caught up in your emotions, You'll, be, you'll have money in a savings account. And unfortunately, savings accounts do not build wealth. They are, it's there to protect it and keep it safe. But technically, you're losing money. You ever notice people who are older, your rent goes up, the, the, the food you buy at the grocery store, gas goes up, the cost of living goes up, but our jobs aren't paying us more. It's called inflation. Savings accounts don't build wealth. They are here to preserve your money for a later date. Investing builds wealth. So I'm saying if you're going to give your money away, start giving your money to you and buying into the companies that you know are always going to generate revenue as a result of you. Make sense? This is just from a high level perspective. I have like a two hour class on like all of this, but I'm just, my, I, I wanna just get you to a point where you're spending too much and you're not putting that money back into your account so that your money is working for you. That makes sense? Yes, thank you. Hi, my name is Nevaeh Parker, um, and I have a situation of where, like, um, I'm start, I'm working this summer, mm-hmm. and I'm going to be working next uh, school year, and I'm thinking of, like, the account that I should do. So my mother want to do a share account, but I don't think I could trust her because I think she's going to take money out of the account. Okay. So what is the best bet? <laughs> <laughs> so what is the best bet? Do a share account or actually have my own account? In- um, so this is my honest to God opinion. Your mother, again, is there to protect you. However, sometimes our par- parents don't manage their money. And you'd be surprised how those unconscious habits are passed down just like the eye color and your skin tone is. So be very conscious of that. Now, I don't remember what age it was, but I was connected to my mom. And I got tired of her knowing what I was doing with my money. And so I detached myself from it. So maybe you can have some money with your mom and you can have your own separate accounts. But don't, how old are you? 16. Mm. So you kind of need your mom to get the account. (laughs) Um. (sighs) I would say, I can, yeah, so I can say, say, mom, okay, I need you to open the account for me, but I want to practice being independent. Just practice, because I know one day you won't always be by my side to guide me. So I want to do something with you, but is it okay if I try to do this on my own as well? And if I need any help, you're the first person I'll come to. And she'll feel like, of course, I love you. You know, so, <laughs> so, so, but once you turn 18, but is I, I, I still need my mom. So, so I realize you just get older, you're always gonna need your mom, or your, you know, or your family, period. Um, but don't, don't hurt her feelings, because she may not be the best person with money. Maybe you guys can come up with a savings plan together. Maybe you can save for a vacation together. And so now it's a process that you're doing unitedly. If that makes sense. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Oh, we got two. Okay, all right, two more, okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you.